Do you wanna get into Resonator Guitar, but you're just not sure where to start? Well, look no further than today's episode of Acoustic Tuesday, because I'm gonna share with you six Resonator guitars under $799, plus I'll give you a three-step framework on how to buy your first Resonator guitar. One of the problems when getting into Resonator guitar is that there's seemingly two distinct ends of the spectrum, and it seems like a black and white situation. You've got the very expensive Resonator guitars, and then you have the cheaper Resonator guitars that look like a Resonator, but they don't sound that great, nor do they play that great. Well, I found six guitars that fit smack dab into the middle of that spectrum that offer great Resonator guitar tone, but they aren't too hard on your wallet. So let's go ahead and dig into these models. First up, the Republic Guitars Highway 61. This is a small bodied Resonator guitar that has a cutaway. Now, they actually have a patent on this particular body design, and for good reason, because it's incredibly comfortable and it sounds awesome. First, let's have a listen to the metal body Resonator, which actually actually comes in at a price tag of $759. Now you might be thinking, I like that metal body guitar, but it kind of sounds sharp and brassy. Well, have no fear, because Republic Guitars also offers the Highway 61 in a wooden body, a little bit more of a warmer tone and at an even cheaper price point. In fact, this particular guitar comes in at $599. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> So that was the Republic Guitars Highway 61 model, again, offered in metal or wood. A pretty awesome guitar that's comfy to play and has a great tone. Next up on my list is a metal-bodied biscuit, biscuit cone resonator that offers thunderous tone. And I'm talking that bark you want out of a blues guitar, that thump, that kind of projection that only a resonator guitar can offer. Well, this guitar is the Gretsch Honey Dipper. I've seen this guitar in person. I've seen it in, a, in an array of colors, and it is visually striking, but tonally, it fits the bill and it also fits the budget. This guitar comes in at $649 and it sounds awesome. Here's John Rauhaus playing the Gretsch Honey Dipper. Next up on my list is the Gretsch Bobtail Deluxe. This guitar is a wooden bodied spider cone resonator and offers sweet singing sustain. This guitar comes in at $599 and it is a stellar guitar for anybody looking for a slide guitar or a resonator guitar just to try other tunings. And you want that sweet bell like sustain. In fact, let's give it a listen right now. Here's John Rauhaus again. <laughs> All 
right, any surprises so far? Do you feel like, whoa, those are pretty good deals? Let me know in the comments below. Those are just the first three on my list. In fact, we've got three more coming. On today's Acoustic Tuesday episode, you've already learned about three resonator guitars that won't break the bank. And I've got three more for you. Plus, you're gonna get a three-step framework on how to shop for a resonator guitar. In fact, I'm gonna give you three questions to ask yourself so you can get the guitar that fits your playing style. And then lastly, we're gonna have a listen to a Wyoming-based slide guitarist that not only is he an amazing player, he also helped design a guitar with national guitars. When you lose, you want to Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 155. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week, and yes, indeed, this week is all about resonator guitars. But first, before we dive into the rest of my list, I have to ask you a very important question, a guitar geek trivia question, if you will, that of course involves the resonator. And this is one for you history buffs out there because well, it involves a first. Here's your question. In what year was the first wood-bodied resonator guitar introduced? Was it A, 1902, B, 1917, C, 1928, or D, 1947? Go ahead and ponder that question, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. All right, let's jump back into my six Rezos under $799. In fact, this next Rezo on my list is the least expensive Rezo on the entire list. Coming in at 349 is the Recording King Dirty 30s Single O Resonator. Yes, $349 will get you stellar blues tone out of this wood-bodied biscuit cone resonator guitar. Let's give it a listen. Now, for those of you thinking, you know what? I might want to try lap style or like dobro guitar, you know, where you lay it in your lap and play with a slide and finger picks. I've got a resonator for you. It comes from the folks at Gretsch. It is the Gretsch Boxcar Square Neck. This guitar comes in at $429. Now, I had a really difficult time picking a guitar in this category because I wanted to offer you all a guitar that you could play lap style that comes in at a great price that gives stellar tone. And I thought, man, when I first started, I used a, a gold tone Paul Beard square neck. And that was gonna be my pick, but then I looked at the price point and I thought, ah, it's a great guitar, but it actually ex exceeds my price point. Then I remembered, oh, Gretsch makes a square neck, and this guitar offers a ton of tone for not a lot of money, as I mentioned. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. The folks from Elderly put together a perfect demo that really lets this guitar shine. <laughs> And finally on my list is something that is truly different than any other resonator I've featured thus far. It also comes from the folks at Republic Guitars and it is their Tricone model. This particular guitar comes in, well, let's focus on the wood-bodied Tricone first because this guitar is truly unique. It is wood-bodied, it has three resonator cones within it, it offers the bark of a biscuit cone, but the sustain of a spider cone, it's the best of both worlds and it sounds incredible. And oh, by the way, this guitar comes in at, yes, $599. 
not too heavy on the wallet for the guitar that you actually get. Let's give it a listen. I'm sorry, did you say you wanted something that sounded a little bit sharper? Well, let me introduce you to you the Republic Guitars metal bodied tricone. Yes, it has the three cones, it has the bark, it has the sustain, but it also has the added articulation and kind of internal reverb that a metal bodied instrument gives you. This guitar comes in at a whopping $759. Yes, a metal bodied tricone resonator guitar for $759. Brought to you by the folks at Republic Guitars down in Austin, Texas. Let's give this one a test run. A pretty stellar lineup of guitars, if I do say so myself. Let me give you the quick rundown of what models we've discussed so far. We've got the Republic Highway 61, a fantastic small bodied resonator guitar with a cutaway, comes in metal, comes in wood as well. We've got the Gretsch Honey Dipper, a stellar metal bodied biscuit cone resonator. The Gretsch Bobtail Deluxe, that's a spider cone resonator with a wood body. We've got the Recording King Dirty 30s Singalo, that is a fantastic wood bodied biscuit cone resonator. We've We've got a Gretsch boxcar square neck, which is fantastic for those of you looking to get into uh, lap slide playing. And then lastly, the Republic Tricone coming in wood body or a metal body. Again, all of these guitars are under $7.99. So you can kind of break that barrier and enter the resonator realm, if you will. But I want to know, I actually have a question for you. Were there any favorites that you saw? on the lineup so far? Or were there any guitars that surprised you? Or did I miss one of your favorite budget-friendly resonator guitars? If I did, let me know in the comments below. I'd love for this episode to become a resource for all the guitar geeks thinking, gosh, you know, I really wanna get into resonator guitars, but I just don't know where to look. Let's help some fellow guitar geeks out. Flood the comments with your favorite resonator guitar under $799. Oh, and I have a favor to ask of you. You do know Acoustic Tuesday is turning three. In fact, next week's episode is the third year anniversary of the Acoustic Tuesday show. And yes, we are doing an Ask Me Anything. Just visit asktonyp.com and you can ask me anything you want. This is your chance to put me on the spot. In fact, we've got tons of questions coming in already, and I have a feeling that this particular segment might, well, I think it might make an appearance on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday as well. It could very well be a regular segment depending on how many questions we get. So again, go to asktonyp.com. You've got 30 seconds or less to put me on the spot and, well, ask me anything. All right. So you're thinking, cool, Tone, you went over these resonator guitars and that's all swell, but I like what you went over, but I kind of want to go my own way. I want to pave my own path here and I want to buy a resonator guitar for myself, but I need the knowledge so that I can ensure that I'm making the right choice for me. Well, this is exactly why I want to share with you the three most important questions you need to ask yourself when buying a resonator guitar. There are three simple questions, but I can guarantee you if you answer these questions, you'll get yourself a resonator guitar that perfectly aligns with what you want. So what's the first question? The first question is what body material do you want for your resonator guitar? And it comes in two flavors. You've got a wood bodied resonator, which gives you some wonderful warmth and some kind of thicker single notes, or you've got a metal bodied resonator, which is brassy, it's more articulate. And metal bodied resonators generally have this kind of beautiful internal reverberation. So you have a choice to make. Do you want warm, thick single notes or do you want cutting, reverberated single notes? That's the choice you make when you pick wood or metal. 
If you want thick and warm, go with wood. If you want kind of tight, projecting, reverberated notes, go with a metal-bodied resonator. The next question you have to ask yourself, and this one's actually pretty easy, is which neck style do you want? Do you want a round neck resonator guitar, which allows you to play, well, just like you do your standard flat top steel string acoustic guitar, you can do anything that you do on your regular guitar on a round neck resonator, or do you want a square neck resonator? A square neck resonator is specifically designed for lap style playing, also known as, it's, it's referred to commonly as a dobro. The strings are pretty significantly high off the fingerboard because you're not gonna be fretting this instrument. You're gonna be playing it solely with a slide in your lap. Literally, the guitar lays in your lap nice and solidly because of that square neck and you play it with a slide. It's a pretty simple question to answer. Do you wanna play like a normal guitar or do you wanna play lap style? That will help you determine what neck style you want for your resonator guitar. And the final question you need to ask yourself is what, what type of resonator system do you want? And there's three and I'll go over each right now. You've got a single cone biscuit style resonator. This, uh, imagine a speaker cone facing the inside of the guitar. The strings are resting on top of that speaker cone, and this is where that beautiful reverberation comes from, right? So this is a single biscuit cone. Remember, you can get this in wood or a metal body, which will further influence the tone. Furthermore, the biscuit cone offers this wonderful thump and almost a quick decay. So it's great for fingerstyle, it's great for blues, and it's great for kind of those ragtime pieces that are pretty noty, and each note needs to speak. The next type of resonator system you'll be looking at is a spider cone resonator. And this one is a little different because now the speaker cone is essentially facing out of the guitar. So it's projecting sound outwards. Plus you'll see this kind of cast aluminum piece over the top of the cone, which is, well, it looks like a spider web, hence the spider cone designation. This resonator system offers a ton of sweet singing sustain. In fact, you'll see a lot of players favor this if they play slide, if they play in a lot of alternate tunings, because it gives the notes time to breathe. It's a much longer sustain tail on the notes from a spider cone resonator, resonator than say a biscuit cone resonator. And then the final resonator system you'll be looking at is a tricone. And it literally is three biscuit cones face down inside the guitar with a T bridge. And the T bridge is a T because the bridge needs to make contact with each of those cones. Now the tricone, in my opinion, is kind of the best of both worlds because you get the bark of a single biscuit cone, but you also get the sustain of a spider cone resonator. So it's pretty cool for slide. It's great for finger picking again. It, it functions extremely well with alternate tunings and it's kind of, well, Swiss Army Knife. And I feel like it's a resonator system that doesn't get enough time in the spotlight. And well, here it is. So there you have it. Those are the three questions that you need to ask yourself when it comes to purchasing a resonator guitar. What body material do you want, wood or metal? What neck style do you want, round or square? And then what resonator system? You've got biscuit cone, spider cone, or of course, tricone. And then you can design or rather make a choice based on your tonal preferences and try out guitars that will directly align with what, well, you think you want, which is pretty nice. It's pretty nice to go into that shopping experience with that kind of confidence, or at least know some of the vocabulary so you can talk to the sales representative or do your own further research. And speaking of further research, if you wanna dig deeper on resonator types, please go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT155, where of course you can do a deep dive. And I love episodes that end in five because it rhymes with deep dive. It's kind of neat. I really dig it. Anyways, uh, speaking of, of episodes, let's go back to episode 153, where I talked about the 10 albums that changed my acoustic life. I want to visit some comments from that particular episode, because uh, as, with, as with any episode that revolves around albums or things that people are extremely passionate about, there were a ton of comments and some great things, some great albums were mentioned uh, in them. So I want to go over them. Our first comment comes from Randy Worley. And he says this, one of the very first bluegrass albums I bought is Skaggs and Rice. It's Ricky Skaggs on mandolin and Tony Rice on guitar. 
Just the two instruments with both singing, it made a big impact on me and one I never tire of listening to. Randy, I cannot agree with you more. That is one of my favorite albums. In fact, uh, it's an album that I purchased on vinyl some time ago and I've pretty much worn it out at this point. Uh, it's a beautiful album, two, two great artists with two great acoustic instruments. I believe Ricky Skaggs is playing his, uh, um, his Gibson F5 uh, Lloyd Lore on that. And of course, Tony Rice is playing his 1935 uh, D28. Uh, a great, a great acoustic album for sure. Good, good call, Randy. Our next comment comes from John Baker. And he says this, the very first bluegrass record I bought was Bill Monroe and Doc Watson live recordings, 1963 to 1980. He bought that back in 1993. Up until then, I had been a metalhead who had some interest in folk music from hitching around and playing Woody Guthrie songs. But after hearing those two virtuosos, I never looked back. Next up, Reverend Gary Davis live at Newport. And I very much resonate, uh, Resonator Guitars, I resonate with your comment, John because I am definitely uh, still a devout metalhead. Uh, but some, sometimes those acoustic recordings creep up and they just grab your attention as it sounds like they did for you. And what a great album to get you hooked on acoustic music. Bill Monroe and Doc Watson, two of the, the trailblazers of acoustic music, specifically bluegrass, pretty awesome stuff. Our next comment comes from Michael Laverty, and he says this, another great show in which you turned us on to more outstanding artists. I'm looking into last week's artists. You are a true all-around music geek. Thanks for everything you do, past, present, and in the future. Well, thanks for your kind words, Mike. I appreciate that. And I, uh, I am as much of a guitar geek as I am. I'm certainly a music geek. In fact, pretty much every Sunday, you can find me at Cactus Records here in Bozeman, just, just leafing through the bins because, well, I was going to say I'm an addict, but I'd like to say that I'm more of an appreciator than an addict. You know what I mean. Uh, another comment here comes from Robert Carhart Jr. And he says this, having seen Preston Reed play live several times and even hung out with him after a house concert very late into one particularly notable evening, as Dom and Sharon T can attest, he's an absolutely amazing musician. Thanks for the mention of that particular album, Instrument Landing, for those of you who didn't catch the episode. Though uh, it's one I don't have, I will fix this. And of course, the wonderful Tommy E. Pretty awesome. I had a chance to meet uh, Rob here in Bozeman. And when I heard that Preston Reed was playing a house concert out by him, I knew he was going to be in attendance. But I didn't know about that late evening. So that's a pretty cool uh, guitar geek story. Thanks for sharing that, Robert. And then our final comment comes from Ray Rodriguez. And he says this, I agree with you. That music can be an amazing trigger for memory. There are songs that I hear on the radio that'll take me back to 1979, 1980, and even back to like 1977. If I hear Handyman by James Taylor, I'm 10, again, walking at the carnival in Wahiawa, Hawaii, I hope I said that right, uh, where I'm from. Or if I hear I'm Coming Out by Diana Ross, suddenly I'm walking down the stairs at the park where I used to live in Germany. Or if I hear Rapper's Delight, I'm on the bus going to school in fifth or sixth grade, also in Germany. A strong memory trigger. You know, Ray, your comment got me thinking because there are songs that I hear that will immediately, it's like, a, they are like a time machine. It takes me right back to when either I first heard them or kind of the, the, the moment where like, I felt like the song was connected to that point in my life. Uh, very cool associations we make with, with music and, and our own personal history. So it's kind of cool to think back to, well, I guess our own personal soundtracks. It's kind of a fun experiment where you play songs from long ago and all of a sudden you remember details you thought, Maybe maybe you didn't even remember. Uh, pretty cool stuff. But I want to thank everybody for the comments from that episode. More importantly, for taking the time to list out the albums that significantly impacted your life. There's a great compilation of lists on that episode. So for those of you who haven't checked out that episode of Acoustic Tuesday, please check out episode 153. Um, again, where I talked about the 10 albums that changed my acoustic life. Now, uh, before I dig back into my list, there were some arrivals in the mailbag that I just must share with you. Plus, I have some exciting, fun news. Two pieces of news, actually. One from an artist that we featured um, on episode 152, the 10 women that are making their mark on acoustic music. We'll get there in a second. But first, uh, I got this wonderful shirt in the mail. 
And this is from Wade Sutton. And he says, thanks for all you do. Check out my tune, Six Feet of Corona on all the digital streaming platforms. He sent me this shirt and I absolutely love the graphics on this shirt. It's a, it's like a, a, a woodcut or like a, a linoleum print uh, of, a, of a dude playing guitar in a gas mask. And it just, I just love the aesthetic of it. So I appreciate that, Wade. Thanks for sending along that shirt and uh, also giving me the heads up about your tune, Six Feet of Corona. As guitar geeks, we can certainly check that out. Again, it's on all the digital streaming platforms. And then I got a, a little note here from Sean DeBurka. You might have remembered him from episode 147. And he said this, Hey, Tony, I recently teamed up with Broken Strings, a guy based in Essex, England, who creates handmade guitar string bracelets and laser etched guitar picks. I asked him to make some one-off Shapeshifter merch for his new album, uh, and I also ordered a few extras. These extras are included in this package, two Acoustic Life guitar pick keychains. And indeed, they are so cool. They are guitar picks with the Acoustic Life logo. I thought these were earrings at first, but lo and behold, they are they are key rings. Um, and he says, uh, just wanted to say thank you for featuring my music on Acoustic Tuesday 147. Guitar Geeks Unite. Kind regards, Sean DeBurka. Man, so kind of you, Sean. Thank you so much for sending that, taking the time to do that. And uh, thanks for making awesome music. For those of you who haven't heard of Sean, uh, please, if you like percussive acoustic guitar, if you like fingerstyle acoustic guitar, if you find yourself a metalhead with a, a slight interest in acoustic music, He's, he's a good one to check out. Thanks again, Sean, appreciate it. Oh, I was reaching for more mail stuff. There's no more mail stuff, but I have actual news for you. So back on episode 152, 10 women making their mark on acoustic music. Uh, the, the final artist we featured, Riddy Armin, a, a Montana native here, uh, fantastic artist, great songwriter, great singer. Um, she actually reached out via Instagram to me, uh, which was kind of cool. I was like, oh, this is, this is cool. I, I was excited because I'm, I'm a fan, you know? And um, she said, uh, thanks so much for featuring my music uh, on the show. I'm, I'm really glad that, um, I'm just really glad that you did that. And, and I was glad that we did too, because the response was so great. Everybody in the comments was so kind. And, and a lot of, uh, for a lot of you, Riddy Armin was a new artist uh, for me too. And she said, um, I'm really excited because I have a full length LP coming out at the end of 2020. To which I responded, Riddy, thanks so much for watching the show. Can you, is it okay if I share this with everybody? Because this is really exciting. I'm really excited about it. And I think for those of you who liked Riddy's music, you'll be very excited to know that by the end of 2020, she'll have a new full length album out. And I certainly cannot wait to get my hands on that and uh, make sure to stay tuned and, and um, uh, follow Riddy on Bandcamp or Instagram or, or what have you, whatever you use, uh, because I'm sure she'll be posting about that more and more. But nonetheless, she said, yeah, go ahead and tell everybody. So there I am telling you about the new album. I'm really excited. And I was kind of, I was a little flabbergasted to get the note, to be honest. So thank you, Riddy, for, for reaching out and thanks for making awesome music. And then finally, you all know, or if maybe, maybe you don't know, I'm a huge Blackhawks fan. Hockey's back. Now, by the time this airs, I don't know if it will be the end of the first round it might be. So hopefully the Hawks have won. They did win game one as of this taping. Game two is tonight. But um, I'm a huge Blackhawks fan. And for those of you who've been following the show, you, you may know that Whitney and I are expecting a little Tony coming in September. And we got uh, some family photos done. And here's a, a wonderful picture of us sporting our Blackhawks uh, pride. And um, we're excited. My brother got us the Blackhawks onesie, and uh, it really made it complete. The only thing missing is my son, Aiden, who's uh, 13. He lives in Chicago. He's got a, a Patrick Kane jersey, and that would have made that picture totally complete. But because of travel restrictions, obviously, that couldn't happen. But nonetheless, I wanted to share that with you to um, show you how devoted our family is to the Chicago Blackhawks. Anyways... That's a little side note. Uh, let's dive back into guitar-related things, shall we? I've got a guitar signal for you coming to you from Carson City, Nevada. This is from Mike H. And he says this, Hey, Tony, I love your show and I love your lesson plans. They have made a huge difference in my guitar journey. And then here is his guitar signal from left to right. A Seagull Maritime Solidwood Series Dreadnought, my 50th birthday present from my wife. An American Deluxe Fender Stratocaster, my dog Coda. Side note, I have a dog named Coda as well, and he's also white. Pretty cool. Uh, a Martin Backpacker Classical. A Zager ZAD80CE OM Series. 
Uh, he says, how come you haven't reviewed a Zager guitar? Well, I actually simply haven't had one in my hands quite yet. Uh, and then uh, Traveler EG2 and a Kronbauer Custom Classical given to me by my good friend Nori that passed away in 2016. Now check this out. I've also attached a separate photo of me playing my close carbon fiber guitar in front of our Roligan. I think I, I sound, I, I, may, I pronounced that right, a Roligan. It looks like a cool vehicle. It's got fat tires, it's on snow and ice. Looks pretty, it looks cool. Like I would want to drive one at some point in my life. He says, I keep the close on the north slope of Alaska where I work. And if you want to include the next photo, you know you're a guitar geek when, unbeknownst to you or the contractor, your backyard patio winds up in the shape of a guitar. Thanks for all you do for the Guitar Geek community. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for sharing uh, all those pictures. Your guitar snow, we got matching dog names. You drive a Roligan, which is a cool vehicle I never heard of before, and your patio is shaped like a guitar. Pretty, pretty good example of living the acoustic life, if I do say so myself. All right, uh, one more thing I wanna, I wanna dig into before we dive back into my list, and that is guitar gratitude. Uh, show after show, I've urged uh, you, the Acoustic Tuesday viewer, to visit guitargratitude.com, and please submit uh, a video where you share something that you're grateful for that the guitar has brought into your life. It takes a minute or less. Again, you can do it right off of that website, guitargratitude.com, and then I'll feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Now, I was gonna dig through the submissions, and then I thought, we're a little low on submissions, hence me asking you right now. I thought, I, I found this video that actually is guitar gratitude, but it wasn't submitted by an Acoustic Tuesday viewer. It was simply a video that I found. It's from Norman's Rare Guitars, and it features Norm and Michael. And Michael received something special, and he didn't really know about it. But it just shows how awesome the Guitar Geek community is. So without further ado, let's take a look at this video from Norman's Rare Guitars. Hey everybody, Norm over here, and I just want to thank you guys for watching our videos, supporting the store. It's a tough time. I hope you're all well. Um, you know, it's uh, very appreciated that you guys uh, pay attention and uh, watch the stuff that we do, and uh, and we love you guys. And thank you guys for supporting the store. So, Michael, today we're going to do this '69 Strat. It's a maple cap Strat, and um, you want to open that up real quick. So. Uh-oh. No. It's not a maple cap strat. I made a mistake. Oh my goodness. Susan. Oh no. No way. I'm like shaking. Oh Jesus. Wow. That's insane. Well, we have we have an angel that loves oh our videos, God. loves He's... Michael, loves his <laughs> playing. <laughs> and he did a video with this uh Fiesta Red oh. Jaguar the other day. And Susan called and said, I want to buy this for Michael. Oh my. And I mean, oh my. what an incredible gift. And she's so generous. She does stuff for all kinds of people, very involved with the homeless um, up in San Francisco. Um, just one of the real angels that really watches the store. And she loves Michael's playing, and she just is a music lover. <laughs> Wait, read, read and, the note. Uh, read the note. I can't even read right now. <laughs> Michael? Please enjoy your new guitar. I hope it brings you many years of pleasure. Make some great music with it. Love, Susan. Well, thank you, Susan, so much, and much love to you. I'll be calling you ASAP. Um, I am completely shocked. This is the nicest thing I've ever owned. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get insurance very fast. And, uh, wow, I will definitely put it to good use. Uh, my father actually texted me right after this guitar went up and just said, wow, you sounded really great on it. And, uh... Um, the hardest part about being out here is wow. being away from my family. And uh, I was thinking about it the other day that um, how much sacrifice I put into the guitar. And um, these moments make it worthwhile. Um, thank you so much. Pretty awesome stuff. And congratulations, Michael. And it's just so cool that they shared that with us, uh, with, with the public, really. So uh, cheers to Norm. Cheers to Michael. And uh, a cheers to Susan, who who just kind of purchased the guitar and gave it to Michael. That, I just thought that was a cool story that we all needed to know about. Um, pretty awesome stuff. I, I just was, I was touched by it, so I wanted to share it with, with all of you. Now I wanna dig back into, let's, let's go on a journey back into the resonator realm, shall we? I wanna feature an artist that lives in Wyoming. 
And as soon as I found that out, I was excited because Whitney, my wife, is from Sheridan, Wyoming. And I thought, man, next time we go to Wyoming, when it's safe, I need to look up this artist to see if maybe we can get together, maybe have a lesson. He's an amazing teacher, an amazing musician. His name is Mike Dowling. Mike Dowling is a great finger picker, a great slide player, and he primarily plays resonator guitar. And he is... Um, I gotta tell you, we've listened to a couple of his albums during dinner this last week, and it's just the most calming music. He, he can play the blues in a way that um, it's just it just kind of sucks you in, and the way that he plays slide is just, it's mesmerizing. In fact, uh, let's listen to him do a little finger picking here. Here is him just simply playing some blues in G. For those keeping notes, that was a wood-bodied biscuit cone resonator. So if you like the tone, go in that direction. Uh, the next song sample I have is Michael here playing Boogie Woogie Dance, and this just shows how great of a slide player he is. He actually helped design that guitar that he was playing. I want to say it's the El Trovador Cutaway, but I could be mixing up some names. So if that's not fully accurate, I'm sorry, but if it is, I'm pumped. Um, but nonetheless, he actually helped design that model with national guitars so he could have that cutaway, use the capo, access the higher frets on the neck, and to kind of really show what that particular guitar is capable of and to show how beautiful a resonator guitar can sound when it's simply finger picked, here's Mike playing Jitterbug Waltz. <laughs> So what should you listen to from Mike Dowling? Well, I've got a couple albums here that I think should be on your list. The first is Swamp Dog Blues, and this is an album that Whitney and I recently listened to that really was uh, fantastic. Start to finish, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Next up, we got Beats Working, and then Bottomlands, and then finally Blue Fandango, which I believe is his uh, latest release. And uh, Mike is just, his voice is a treat, his playing is a treat, his slide playing is fantastic. And not only does Mike create great music, but he actually teaches incredibly well. He's got a bunch of different uh, instructional materials out from slide guitar to finger picking to composition. Uh, and you can find some of that on Homespun. And also I believe he's got a couple of books out as well. So uh, it's one of those, those rare occurrences where an incredible player is an incredible teacher as well. And I certainly appreciate that. And uh, if you want to learn more about Mike, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT155. And you can do a deep dive and see those performances in their entirety. Uh, well, I'm about ready to wrap up the show, ladies and gentlemen, and we are on the doorstep of the third anniversary, the third year anniversary of the Acoustic Tuesday show. But 
we do have to revisit your Guitar Geek trivia question. So if you need a quick reminder of this history-infused question, of course involving resonator guitars, let me go ahead and give you that reminder. Your question was this. In what year was the first wood-bodied resonator guitar introduced? Was it A, 1902, B, 1917, C, 1928, or D, 1947? Well, if you answered C, 1928, you're correct. The first wood-bodied resonator was the Triolian by National, introduced in late 1928. By 1929, this model had been converted to a metal-bodied instrument pretty short-lived wooden-bodied instrument. Um, the very first wood-body triolians had a tricone resonator guitar system. Less than 10 of these examples were likely produced. Much like the metal-bodied version, the wood-body triolian has a single cone resonator, round shoulder, upper F holes, bound single layer fretboard, dot fingerboard inlays, 12 frets clear of the body. And that's how they make them, I believe, to this day uh, in a, in a metal-bodied fashion. But those earlier wood-bodied ones, um, Pretty cool to get your hands on one of them, knowing that it's one of 10 that might have been made. And again, there's no there's no distinct record of those 10. They said it may have been 10. Pretty cool stuff. And yes, I'm a guitar geek and a history geek. So when those two worlds collide, it's pretty darn exciting. All right. Uh, well, I am indeed ready to wrap up the show. I cannot believe we are on the doorstep of three years of Acoustic Tuesday, as I mentioned before. If you haven't got your questions in at asktonyp.com, please, please, please do that. Let's uh, let's really, let's make that show a lively one. Ask me anything you want. Put me on the spot. Make me sweat. I'll actually already be sweating because unbeknownst to you, I'm going to be answering the questions you ask me while uh, uh, consuming some incredibly hot, hot sauce. In fact, I've got six different ones I'm going to be trying throughout the three-year anniversary show, and by the end, could very well be a train wreck. So I was going to say, let's take a sneak peek into next week, but you already know what's going to happen. It's the three-year anniversary of Acoustic Tuesday. I'm going to be answering your questions that you asked me at asktonyp.com. I will be doing so while consuming hot sauce and offering up some of my favorite moments from Acoustic Tuesday history. Yes, indeed, that's all happening next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, Acoustic Tuesday airs every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv, where you can do a deep dive into anything I've ever featured on the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, guitar geeks unite. Cheers. Cheers.